All right, so this is this is the whole story. It's very, very simple. It's a short story. E minus E with a little negative means this is electrons. Every time you see that, we're talking about electrons. Now, it's electron flood theory. This is my theory, and it's a unified theory. It co covers every single thing. There's nothing that I cannot explain. If you can come up to me with any electronic interaction, I can explain it. That's my statement. That's my claim. All right, now. There is no neutrons. You got to get neutrons out of your head. They don't exist. The other principles is there is no speed for light, and I show you a demonstration of that quite easily, no problem. There is nucleus is packed with electrons. It's packed with electrons because there's no neutrons. That is the natural nature of things. Neutrons would just drift away. They don't drift away. They don't decay to electrons. They are not neutrons. They are electrons. Now. Electrons spin with a right-hand rule, and I can show you that as well. These experiments that I did with Rodney Warren and the, the, you know, the analysis I've done over the last three years, I've been working on this. And I, I've, I see every single thing that they had hoped for, and every single thing is recreatable, and now we have other people doing it. So, what you have to remember is that light is an electron. Light itself is an electron. It's not a nothing wave of nothingness. It's an electron. And when it comes in, it's like a billiard ball. It slams into the other electrons in the cloud, bounces them out of there. They come out at a lower frequency because some of the bouncing is absorbed as heat. All surfaces, every single surface there is, not one single thing exists that is not negative on its surface. Every single thing there is. There's nothing that is not negative on its surface because every atom is coated with electrons. They circle it. And all the atoms make up molecules and never there's zero things that are, are positive except the atomic bomb, which I think I either have shown you or will show you. All right, so all, per, all surfaces repel other surfaces. Every single one of them. Every single one of them. Very lightly, mostly. And some of them quite a bit. Depends on what that surface is composed of and what the other surface is composed of. That's magnetism. Mag uh, gravity is magnetism. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. All repulsion creates reactants. You push against something and you, 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 you get warmed up a little bit. There's a reactance going on. Reactance creates energy. All right? So when one of these negatives slams into another negative, it lights up, it glows, there's energy happening. I can't explain that exactly. But they're forcing each other into each other's regions, and they don't want that. They want to own their own regions. I'm going to show you a couple things. And all of these things I'm saying, I'm going to prove. Every single one of these things. And when I say they own a region, I can prove that too. All right, the light particles, which are particles, I can prove that too. They're electrons. And they own a very, very, very large region in space if they were not forced together and cr cr crushed amongst each other. And once they do that, you crush closer and closer and closer, more and more and more glow, more and more and more energy. That is, the harder you push, the more it's going to push back. That's just the nature of, of repulsion. Right? So, the light particles are electrons, they own a large region, they push together. Now, we're going to watch John Glenn's reaction to what he saw when he went through the ionosphere. And the ionosphere is nothing but electrons. That's my statement, and they know this. It's all negatives. They wanted to go out and try to suck it down, and then they had the tether incident, and then they saw all the electrons glowing in the rising sun, or the say, I guess it was the, as the sunrise was coming, yeah, just coming at the sunrise. And the same thing with Glenn. And the only time you see him is when that is, because it, they're in the shadow of the sun, they're getting hit by the sun, and but he's seeing it from the darkness. It's like you looking out from a darkened room and seeing lights out in the sky. That's all it is. And we're going to look at that. Gravity is magnetism, my friends. The Earth sucks. It sucks electrons to itself. That's why your static electricity on you is sucked directly to ground. That's why if you don't have something grounded and you touch an electricity, it will go through you to get to ground. It wants to be in ground. That means the ground is positive. That's the only possible 
it's obviously positive. All right, and it's sucking the electrons out of the air. Tesla understood this. He had a whole different concept of what was going on. Now, I, I got to be honest with you. I don't think his, 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 I don't think it would have worked the way he was hoping it would have worked uh, in, on the broad scale that he was thinking about. To be perfectly honest with you, but I understand what he was trying to do. Um, anyway, that's uh, gravity is magnetism. That's my statement, and now I'm going to show you my supporting evidence. I have lots of videos on this, but I'll show you real quickly. This is a pulse red laser, and the only part of this that is really the laser is a tiny dot right here. Tiny. And I'll show you in the next picture. All right, this is that same disk of, of red laser light crashing through all of the polarized particles, which is nothing more than, remember, everything in the air is nothing more than negative particles that it's got to crash through. Here is that actual particle beam. That's all there is. All of that is just concussion. Now, as it comes through, you can see it's elongated and being sucked in and being accelerated. That's why I say light can accelerate. That is accelerating. I don't see, there's nobody can tell me that's not accelerating. All right? And when it does, it's this particle beam is accelerating and it is particles. These are particles. Then it's not a wave. Now they're being forced and crushed into the spaces that these other particles want to own. They own, or they own their own regions. When you crush them into each other regions, they get hot, they glow, they turn into what's called plasma. Now, there's a cylinder here and a cylinder here. It creates a venturi through here. This forces a continuous spray of atomized electrons. They're atomized and they're electrons. Now, instead of having control over their own regions, they're just being exploded out of here. And then they make these lines in here. This is not a wave interference pattern. This is because of the polarity of the particles trying to push away from this side and push away from that side. They line up. Most of them get pushed this side into the center and pushed from this side into the center. So that's why you get the big glow in the center. Then you have the lines coming to the sides which are get away from me, you get away that side, you get away this side, you get away, and then you get out to the side and it just blurs off. Now, if you look back here, you can see the particles that are in the air, like I said, they will compress and they will turn into glowy particles, and that's exactly what you're seeing. All right, and that's the spray from the atomized um, accelerated light. It's accelerated. And at this point, it's, it's plasma, and plasma is the precursor to fusion. Of course, this is electronic and this won't fuse, but if they were heavy particles, the protonic particles, protons, and they were doing the same thing through a venturi and coming out in this plasma, I don't see why they wouldn't fuse. And what you need to do is you have heavy hydrogens with a one, what they call neutron, and two neutrons. I say those are electrons. They will combine the two protons will combine together and come out of here as helium gas, which is loses one of those masses because it's a two and a three. It's helium two. I mean hydrogen two, hydrogen three weight. And when it combines, and they lose all the electrons. And then I say, well, well, let's get back together again and let's be the stablest we can be. And they say, well, so we can be a noble gas if we want. I say, well, let's do it. <laughs> and they get together, and they say, well, what do you do with all the other guys that were attached to you? All those other electrons. So I got rid of them. I don't need those. I didn't want them in the first place. They got attached to me. I've been trying to decay them off of me for years. All right, so they're gone. I don't care about them. So now we're going to be attached together here. We're going to be healing. And he said, well, how are the other guys going to get out of here? He said, well, the, the guy's got a pipe coming in here. It's what they call an electrode. And it will suck those things right out of there. And they'll, you know, they'll, they'll be forced. They'll want to go out of there. They'll find their way out, trust me. They will want to get out of here. And that is the conduit to get out. And zip, they'll shoot out of here. So what does that mean? If we can continuously create plasma of protons, I think you have self-sustaining fusion. The problem is they can never get this contained. This is a mechanical crusher. I have videos on this and quite pretty good detail. So you probably should look at those. But I'm going to show you why I say the light can spin to the right too. 
and here is a, here's a light spinning to the right. There it is. That's in the blue laser. Now this is right after the 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 accelerator, and it's it's still it's spinning to the right means it drifts to the left. It's expanded. It's compressing. Eventually, right up somewhere soon, it will create the polarized Higgs field. And these are the polarized Higgs fields. This was the patterns I was talking about before, and they are presented as a magnetic head at the tip of a boson, which is a high-speed particle coming through the accelerator, called Cheryankov radiation. It's a particle that carries a charge, which is an electron. That's exactly what I'm saying. It's spinning. We saw the blue spins. Well, what does that mean? When it spins through here, it's like whipping those electrons in front of it into a frenzy of a circle, which is the magnetic field. And, and it only happens for like that, and then it's gone, because it, it, it absorbs it, it impact energy. Now, this is a different case. That is antimatter. I, I don't care what you say. If they say antimatter has a reverse polarity and is exactly identical to the other particle, but reverse polarity, that is antimatter. It came out of here as light, because it went in as light. It was a red laser going in, came out as light. I don't care how you do it. It went in as light, it comes out as light. Case closed. There is no magnetic field. There is no field. These dots, those are the fields. These are all the fields from all the electrons squirting out of here. That one's spinning backwards. There's a right-hand rule. That one's backwards. That is antimatter. And that collided with one of these fields and created some very strange effect. I'll show you that now. All right? this, I don't know what to say other than this is what happened. That is that white particle that is highly exci excited because it's glowy white and it, it crashed into another one of these fields, which was a normal field, and I'm seeing it stepping down. That has a structure, has some form of a structure similar to these, and then it, it starts this, this change. Now, what happened here? There's a little light trumpet, whatever you want to call this thing, is shooting off to the side. Now, uh, I don't know what to say about that, whether this is, 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 is smaller than these, or if it's the same as these, or if it's ricocheting off of one of these. And it's the only shot I have like this, so. Um, all the other ones we have, a lot of shots of, of them actually, and actually we have shots of the particles too. Very strange. First of all, this shows that light is a spinning particle, not a wave like this. And the reason it, I explained the reason that they come through and they are magnetic negative particles. They stay away from each other as they, some screws go this way, some come over the top and go this way through the uh, Venturi. Now these are the red particles. That's what I'm seeing as particles. They're dark and, you know, there's power and no power inside of these. There's, a, there, there's some flippy floppy thing going on. This is where they come out highly accelerated and immediately they, they crash, the red ones. The greens run for quite a bit distance. Alright, here's the green ones. They come way out from the accelerator before they display, but they're exactly the same structure. 